The new cavalry commanders are visible in-game, at least if you're in the Season of Conquest. So in this video, we're going to review their kits and talk about how they're going to change the meta in Rise of Kingdoms. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, and I am so hyped to see that there are new commanders listed in-game to see if they shake up this heavy garrison meta that we're in right now. We've been battling for literally the past three days, non-stop, live stream after live stream after live stream, triple rallies, and more. Check those videos out. But before we talk about these commanders, I just want to give a quick thank you to the sponsors of this video, and that is the makers of Infinite Galaxy. Sponsorships help me on my journey for being a full-time content creator. So let me just show you Infinite Galaxy, which I play pretty obsessively. In Infinite Galaxy, you explore the vastness of space to claim territory, battle fierce foes, and yes, take down other players. In this game, you'll be building a collection of flagships. You'll use those to wage war, with your collection of war ships, whether it's the sprightly frigate, the mid-sized destroyer, or the massive cruisers, your fleet will go head-to-head -head against opponents in space combat and in the campaign. But it wouldn't be much of a fleet without its crew. Your crew will help define and customize the way that your team works together as you build out the most amazing space station, the galaxy has ever seen, building up and constructing things from your headquarters to your military center to make sure you're ready for the next encounter. Along the way, you'll do a ton of research, advancing your space station's capabilities in both situations against players and in situations that help you build up and get stronger. What happens next in this game? Well, my friends, it's entirely up to you. A huge thank you again to the creators of Infinite Galaxy for sponsoring this video, which really does support the channel. We're enjoying all the new stuff that they've been adding to this game, including new VIP, and there's new features like new flagships being added to this game all the time. I'm very hyped for the direction this game is headed and what might be coming next. If you want to join us, you can play with us in Nebula 13 or check out our Discord, discord.gg slash chiscool, and find a group to play with. Use the link in the description to download the game and that will support the channel and thanks for checking it out and thank you again to our sponsor. Let's get a look at these two new commanders which are so spicy. First, the garrison commander. Now, the active skill on this cavalry garrison mobility commander is comparable in ways to the active skill that we have on Herald. I'll show that to you in a second. But on this commander, you've got 1,500 damage factor to the current target and Troops led by this commander gain an upwards of 20% increased damage, which is a big deal for three seconds. Now, that means you want this commander to be using their active skills frequently as possible. They're buffing. So you want this commander to be generating rage or paired with a commander that generates rage. Now, I mentioned that this is similar to Herald in some ways because when we get a look at Herald's active skill, he does, when he's being surrounded... 1,500 damage factor and a damage bonus of 20%, and it's only for two seconds, okay? Now, he also has some AoE, and his kit's a little bit different, but I'm just calling attention to this because, okay, 1,500 damage factor and a 20% damage bonus for three seconds is pretty freaking good. Looking at the next skill, it's a little complicated at first blush, but really, there's two ideas. Stuff that happens when you're out in the field and stuff that happens when you garrison, specifically a stronghold, which is, you know, a flag or a fort, or your own city, Ark of Osiris, also qualifies as a stronghold. If you're in a resource node, that is not on the map, for the record. So when you're on the map, that means out of one of those stronghold structures that we were just talking about, you get an upwards of 10% increased defense and 15% march speed. Now, the thing that's kind of cool about that is that helps you on your way to a garrison, which is kind of nice. Once you get there, you have 20% defense and health. This is a big deal. This is the magic number, 20% defense, 20% health. A lot of really strong commanders are giving those sorts of stats, 20% defense, 20% health. Just to point out some examples of where I think that's really strong, Trajan, 20% defense, 20% health. To give another example of 
where that's really strong, Artemisia. She's got 20% defense, and I just scrolled past her, and 20% health. That is the magic number for a very tanky commander. That's what you want to see, and it's comparable. What I'm saying here is it's comparable to other commanders. Up next, skill damage taken. This is really good in Canyon. This is really good in Ark of Osiris, really good in the field. Decreased by 10%. Now, 10% is not much. We're used to much, much, much more. This third skill is honestly very confusing to me. And I understand what it does. I'm saying it's confusing as, as in, like, why is this here? So it makes the commander better at dealing with archers. Here's why. When commanding a garrison of a stronghold or your own city, cavalry units deal 5% increased damage to archers. However, take... 5% increased damage from infantry. So I guess if somebody wants to take the outrageous move of rallying a cavalry commander with archers, which, okay, I mean, like you might try it, uh, you're going to get super wrecked. But if people bring infantry, which is kind of what you would expect to counter cavalry already, then they're going to do better against you. I, I don't know why this is here for Garrison. It's, it makes them better at something they were already good at, which I guess is min-maxing, but it gives them a real vulnerability to infantry. Let's get a look at the next skill here. Troops led by this commander gain 10% increased skill damage, which is good. 10% increased skill damage is pretty solid. It's not life-changing, but it's decent. When they take skill damage, they gain 50 rage per second for 3 seconds. Hello, 150 rage over 3 seconds? This effect can trigger at most once every eight seconds. Basically, any commander you're fighting, except maybe Attila Takeda, are going to trigger this. I mean, okay, if you're rallying uh, with Attila Takeda into this commander, that's kind of hilarious. But this commander wanted to generate rage in their first skill, and they have in their own kit a way to generate rage, which is a big deal. I think this is pretty meaningful. So, you want to have high uptime on the active skill here to get the 20% damage boost. We know that this is important on commanders like Zenobia. She's so busted because of that 30% damage boost, and she's giving herself more rage to make this a possibility. Let's look at the expertise skill. Troops led by this commander deal 10% increased damage to rallied troops. So a little bit if this is garrison related, but a piece of this is also relevant in the open field and in garrison. When active skill is used, so when the active skill is used, I don't know if this is when the active skill of the primary and the active skill of the secondary is used, or if it's just her active skill. I'm going to assume it's just her active skill. Otherwise, this is, I mean, insane. But when the active skill is used, damage taken is reduced by 10% for four seconds. That's a, That's really exceptional. If that applies to every time an active skill is used, the primary and the secondary, then you're looking at something like a full six seconds duration of 10% damage taken reduction, which is very, very strong. All in all, her kit is really good, and she might even be decent in the open field. I think she's missing enough stats to be exceptional in the open field, but I think she could be pretty decent. I think she could be pretty okay in the open field, but her role seems primarily to be for Garrison. Now, I don't know what the best pairings for this are going to be, but if I had to take some guesses, okay, just a few guesses, you could pair with someone like Saladin, and that would probably be shockingly good. We in our KVK have seen some weird stuff with Saladin. Saladin YSS doing pretty decent. So yeah, Saladin with the new commander could be pretty strong in a garrison capacity, by the way. In a garrison capacity, that could be pretty strong. I don't know if you want to pair with YSS. There's no reason you have to have all cavalry. So you could theoretically pair with YSS, who's kind of busted right now. Like YSS plus anything seems to just be really, really good. So that is another possibility. You use the new Cav Garrison Commander. You use YSS. You pair them together. That could be a thing. I'll speculate more on this in another video, but I am definitely intrigued in where this is going to go with the new Cav Garrison Commander and how this might shake up the meta, maybe, away from infantry, or if it just gives us another option, man. Something besides using all our darn infantry all the time for garrisoning. And I will say one concern I have right now is just 
cavalry tree and garrison tree with mobility. I, I don't think you want mobility talents when you're in the garrison. So I don't know how that's going to work out. If we look at cavalry tree and garrison tree, the talents in the cavalry tree, I mean, I guess you could reduce their attack by 20%. And there's a chance that happens from normal attacks. I guess you could go to the right side of the tree, take less skill damage. I do like the left side of the tree giving you a bunch of damage to archers. Maybe the intention is you're supposed to specialize against archers. Undying Fury, I mean, that's solid. I just don't know that she's going to be worthy of being the primary commander because there's just not that many places you can put talents on this commander. If we look at a commander like YSS, I mean, there's just not that many garrison talents that are really exciting. I mean, this is a city defense build, and I've got points all the way over here, but normally... I've got like less than 20 points in the garrison tree and I'm not excited about the cav tree. So it seems really likely to me that she's intended to be a secondary commander. I don't know, but I'm going to be keeping my eye on it. She's available from the mightiest governor. That's what it's showing right now. So we can assume that the other commander that we're going to talk about, by the way, is going to be on the wheel of fortune. I guess to show the mightiest governor, I can see that down here and boom. There she is, baby. Now, this next commander might be shaking things up for the rally meta. I don't know. Zenobia's infantry. Infantry is pretty good against cavalry. So let's get a look at this cavalry conquering skill damage commander. This commander is the first proper AoE cav commander. Besides, okay, we've got some epics that, that do some pretty cool stuff here. In fact, they're pretty legit. By bars is Leo, he's the truth. The active skill deals direct damage to up to three targets in a forward facing fan. 1,700 damage factor. Big deal. Damage dealt to each target is reduced by 25% for each additional target. Man, what a penalty. If I remember correctly, we look at a commander like Esong, and it's not that much, it's only 15%. So we have an AoE Cav Commander, finally, but you get punished pretty heavily if you're hitting multiple targets. Now, it's still more total damage if you hit multiple targets, and I'm pretty excited to do AoE damage in the open field. But what makes this really exciting is this is an AoE defense reduction debuff, 30% defense reduction for three seconds. That's kind of exciting. Three targets suffering that. Okay, you have my attention. Let's look further into the kit. The second skill. Cavalry units led by this commander gain 40% increased attack and 15% march speed. Whoa. That is a lot of stats. That is a jaw-dropping quantity of stats. Now, I don't like attack as a stat right now in Rise of Kingdoms. It's actually a very solid stat it makes fights end faster but if you want efficiency defense and more importantly health are the place to be however there's more here when attacked they have a 20 percent chance to gain 25 percent march speed for three seconds wow so if somebody's hitting you you can go faster now there's going to be a downside to his kit but if you're being hit you can go faster let's look at the next skill this skill is amazing i mean it has a lot baked into it third skill when attacking strongholds or governor's cities. So for most free-to-play players that aren't going to do that, this is not all that important, but let's look at the rest of the kit, okay? Troops led by this commander gain 5% increased damage and normal attacks have a 10% chance to deal additional direct damage factor 400, which can at most trigger once every three seconds. So this is a very small boost to damage. It's giving you 5% damage bonus and 400 damage factor triggered uh, once every three seconds at most, and it's only a 10% chance, so one in every 10 turns, and it's really more like one in every 13 turns or so. It's not exactly how the math works, but you get the idea. I think that this is not doing much. It's actually not doing all that much. I don't, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the the rally related or I swarm related thing for arc and I guess you know if you're swarming cities or whatever or flags like <laughs> I did in uh my last live stream I don't know this is fine but let's look at the next skill this is probably more important forceful spearhead when on the map okay the active skill cost is reduced by 50 rage 
So the active skill cycle will be 950 rage, except, wait a minute, <laughs> the active skill is only 900 rage to begin with. Hello, baby. So you're saying that with the expertise skill on this commander, when you're on the map, which you always will be, I mean, you're not going to garrison with this. We're talking about 850 rage to use the active skills. Whoa. Whoa. Let's keep reading this skill, okay? After using the active skill, troops led by this commander will gain a stack of cavalry damage plus 5%. That's not a ton, but they stack and cost 10% march speed for 10 seconds. You are going to get slowed down a lot. Don't expect to run away very cleanly with this commander. Another stack is gained if they are being surrounded. So, the way that I read this, I think, is that after using an active skill, troops led by this commander will gain a stack of 5% cavalry damage and lose 10% march speed, and it's two stacks if they are surrounded when they use their active skill. That's how I read this, which means, actually kind of amazing, if you're getting surrounded, you're getting 10% extra damage boost, but losing 20% march speed. So... If you're in it to win it and you're sitting there battling, I mean, you're going to do a lot more damage, but you're not going to be able to run away very easily. This effect can stack up to six times. So very rapidly, this is going to stack when you're using your active skills. And on the topic of running away, if this commander wanted to run away, if you wanted to run away with him, you will be slow for 10 seconds, okay? So after you've used your active skill for 10 seconds, you're really slow. You could theoretically have a 25% march speed boost. You can only trigger once every five seconds, though, okay? But you might have this boost helping you get away. So the way that I see this most likely working is that you're kind of going to get caught behind for a while if they're chasing you down, and you could get pretty wrecked. And then after you're pretty wrecked, you're going to have charge talents because cavalry get that, and it gives you a 30% march speed boost. You're going to get this to trigger like once or whatever, and then you run away and get away successfully, I would think. So once you drop below 50%, I think you could escape the fight. But for a 10-second window, I think they are going to be able to free beat down and it's going to suck. So these stacks of March Speed Reduction, I think, only show up when you're using your active skill. It's not going to happen if you just run. So you can run, but there's a, and 10 seconds is a long time. But there is a window in which you will get pummeled. The final skill, the expertise. Troops led by this commander deal an extra 10% skill damage. Hello, baby. Man, this commander. Yeah. Pair him with Khan and just go ham? Do you just pair him with Khan and just go ham? We'll, we'll talk about this in a second. When troops have gained a rage buff for more than one turn, their skill damage will increase by 10% for three seconds. <laughs> this effect can trigger at most once every five seconds. Wow. <laughs> so let's talk about this for a second, okay? If you pair this commander with William, who gives a rage-boosting effect, you're going to have your skill damage increase. The problem with that is, I don't know how fast your active skill cycle is going to be. Is it really going to be fast enough that you'll still have the skill damage increase benefiting you by the time that his active skill comes around again? I don't know. But a commander like Trajan gives a boost. Joan of Arc gives a rage boost over a couple seconds. And the new cavalry commander over here, who, uh, I don't know. I should read the info on her. Is she a little kid? But anyways, she's going to also give you a nice little rage boost over here over the course of three seconds. So there's a bunch of commanders that have some potential synergy with this new commander in the field. And I want to talk about that for just a second. 850 rage to use your active skill. Okay. Use a horn as well to generate extra rage and use Khan. I don't know that there will be faster rage generation in the game. That is an ultra glass cannon. Look at this. You even generate rage over here. Oh my gosh. When you get weak, you generate even more rage. I, I don't know that there is a more glass cannony combination in the game, but that sounds kind of fun and kind of amazing. He also, as I mentioned, reduces the rage. Oh my god, it's 100 rage reduction? Holy jeez. 
So you would have, it, whoa, 750 rage? Am I understanding that? A 750 rage requirement? Is that right? 900 and then reduced by 50? Oh my God. 750 rage. I mean, that's going to happen fast. And you have the skill tree. That's going to generate 120 rage from the active skill cycle of the primary and the secondary. I mean, we may be looking at an actual four-second skill cycle. Active skill of the primary goes off. Downtime for one second. Active skill of the secondary goes off. Downtime for one second. Active skill of the primary goes off. Like, this may be a possibility of an actual... Like, just proper machine gun for skill damage. I, I'm shocked. I don't know if Khan is going to be the thing because that is a super glass cannon march. There's no defense anywhere. <laughs> There's no tankiness anywhere. But it does sound pretty cool. Looking at some other commanders, though, that, that could be pretty good. I mean, you could pair with William. That's still very glass cannony, right? That's still extremely... Glass Kennedy, you get some extra march speed, this is some extra damage factor when you're surrounding stuff, with this, which is kind of nice. I think that they work together nicely. You generate the extra rage over here, which is going to trigger the extra skill damage boost on the new commander. I think this is a solid combination, potentially. Also, if you wanted to go a more tanky route, could it be that Takeda is the way to go? Takeda. I mean, he really wants a rage engine, and sure... You won't benefit from all the talents you could get from the skill tree, but you are going to get all the tankiness you wanted here. A ton of healing, okay? A ton of defense. Skill damage taken reduction, normal attack damage taken reduction, counter attack damage taken reduction. I mean, this could be a pretty fierce combo, but Takeda's really all about tankiness and damage. And if you can get a rage engine, which pff, a new commander has... And you have some other commander buffing it? Oh my gosh. Like, yeah, you could do some serious work with these new cavalry. I'm pretty hyped for this. In terms of the other cavalry we have in the game, I mean, Saladin is an obvious pair. Saladin is a very obvious pair. I don't know which one you'd use as the primary. The support tree generates a ton of rage, which might just be the better way to go. But if you wanted that 100 base rage reduction here, which, by the way, I'm just going to point this out one more time to make sure everybody saw that. The rage requirement is listed in red here at 900, as opposed to the usual 1,000, and then there's a 50 reduction in here. Yeah, Saladin offers the tankiness that the new commander needs. He's got a little bit of march speed, okay, a little bit of defense, a little bit of attack, but it's this over here, skill damage taken reduction, counterattack damage taken reduction, ooh, that is the tankiness that would give the new commander a lot of of staying power. Uh, yeah, this new commander, he seems like he's going to be amazing. And, and I can see how he will be extremely valuable and that there's a lot of ways that you could drop him into a lineup and do some work. I don't know where I'd put him into my lineup, but I think he seems really strong. Like, maybe I get rid of Saladin, but I kind of need the tankiness. People already focus down my Saladin Williams, so I don't know. And... If I look over here at this commander, I am cautiously optimistic that they might change the garrison meta. But what are your thoughts? Let me know down below in the comments. I, I am reacting to this pretty much the first time I'm looking at their kits in depth. This is when they've been released in an official capacity. So let me know your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video and learned something about these commanders, throw a like on here. Consider subscribing for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos designed to help you get value and smash your enemies. We'll hopefully have an opportunity to use these in this season of KVK, which has been completely insane, and you're not going to want to miss that. Until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.